going to be talking about our favorite subject, the coaching opportunity. So um, we're going to get started right away just because her and I are both going to be talking and I just don't, we don't want to be keeping you on here too long. Um, and we also want to be able to take some questions and or do a Q and A at the end. Um, I will have recognition up tomorrow. Um, and we're, it looks like everybody's doing really well at this point in the month. So starting this year off right for sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to get started and in case you don't know what the topic is tonight, it's basically recruiting like a pro and how to share the coaching opportunity. Give me one second here. before I maximize that. Crap. Okay, can you guys see um, recruiting like a pro? Somebody on mute told me yes, no, maybe so. Yes. Awesome, yes. thank you, Sarah. Okay. <clears throat> So, first of all, let's start off with recruiting. We're gonna start off with the mindset shift. And it's not about you, it's all about them, okay? And that's the first place that we wanna start because I think um, it can be really hard when you're starting because you know, you're just thinking, okay, I need to build my team. And really the heart of this business is about other people. and trying to help them reach their goals. So you have to keep your focus there. When you do that, I promise you, things become so much smoother and so much easier for you in all aspects, whether that be challenge groups, whether that be um, the coaching up or challenge groups, whatever it may be, okay? So number one, I want you to stop trying to convince people to join you because it will benefit you. Um, this business is not, it's about people, it's not about success club points. And also you have to remember this business, is, it's gonna change their life. You don't need to convince people to join you. If they're not in it, if they don't get it, that's fine. You know, um, you're doing them a favor by getting them started, by introducing them to the opportunity. If they don't see that, maybe you're not presenting it right, or if, they don't get it, then maybe it's not for them and that's a-okay. So you just have to like accept that and be okay with it. Now, number two is you have the challenger versus the coach. You have to understand that not everyone is cut out for coaching, okay? Um, there's people that are just, they're just cut out to, they are cut out for coaching. They, you just see them, they, will come into your challenge group. Ashley's going to get into that more and they stand out and you're like, wow, that she's just going to make an amazing, he or she is going to make an amazing coach. Or, you know, there are people that are just here and they contact you and you're like, they just need my support. That's all they need. And you really have to be able to discern. Don't look at every person as a potential coach because that can derail not only you as a coach and what our job is as a coach, but also your business. So make sure you have a just, you can distinguish, you know, I don't want you to see every person as a potential coach. I don't think that's a healthy way to look at people. Even if you're looking at them as a discount coach, it's just not a healthy view because also discount coaches, um, that's not a stable way to build your business. Okay. And also you have to remember that a life changed is far more important than a body added to your team. 
Okay, so keep that in mind. And with the shift that they've made this year from my business building people, you guys, the, um, I mean, it's not a huge difference, but it's a significant difference. I, I mean, well, it's a nice little change that they've done with the um, volume. So for this year, you know, you have to be adding customers as well as coaches to your team to be having um, success for recognition within the corporate mindset. Okay. Now, another thing I want to talk about is recruiting is not a bad word, you guys. It's, uh, it's not a dirty word. And I'll be honest with you, <laughs> this past year, the first half of the year, I used to like not like that word. I would be like, Ugh, I hate the word, like recruiting, ooh, it's like so icky. And it's not, it's really not a bad word. Um, I prefer to use building relationships of trust. That's what my mentor has always used with me. That's what I prefer to use because that's what I like to think of it as that's what I'm doing is I'm building relationships of trust with people. But recruiting is not a bad word. It's not a dirty word. It is actually pretty much a compliment to someone. You know, you're, you're, if a headhunter or a recruiter came to you in your job that you have, um, 24 seven, or let's say what your major was in college, if you went to college and they came after you when you graduated college and were like, we want you on our, on our team. We want you in our business. And you had people like bidding for you. Wouldn't you be like, Oh yeah, like this is awesome. Like this is like a compliment. Like I am pretty cool. I am pretty amazing. Yeah. Because they're recruiting you. You, it's a compliment to be recruited. And you know, that's the thing is that and last but not least, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And that's where you have to remember, you know, you have to ask questions. You have to lean in. You have to listen and find the solution that coaching provides for your people. Um, and you have to get them excited and let them know there's change ahead and what coaching is going to do for them. You, um, and I just want to throw in, this is like kind of off topic, but this is where you can utilize voice messaging and it can be very advantageous to you to use this and let people hear your confidence, your excitement and your passion. And it also makes it go to a more personal level, especially if you are, you haven't contacted that person in a while or if you haven't talked with them. Now, another thing about recruiting is confidence is not going to be like, they will like me. Confidence is, I'll be fine if they don't. You have to be okay with people not, care, not liking the coaching opportunity. And if you're not comfortable with talking about it, then you need to be doing personal development for confidence. And you need to be educate, educating yourself more on the coaching opportunity and what it has to provide and what your belief in the whole system and process is. Do you believe in coaching? Because if you don't believe in coaching and what it can provide for you, the freedoms, the flexibility, the other things that it offers, then you aren't going to be able to talk about it with confidence. Now, and we'll, I'll get into that in a little bit here, but you know, you will only go as far as your own personal growth. So if you're not doing personal development, you are not going to go far with recruiting. Um, if you're not doing personal development with self-confidence and just developing yourself, you just won't go far with recruiting. That's the bottom line. So now I want to take this to a question of, okay, let's go. Let's like get down to business. Who do you know? I want to know who in your life do you know that could use more physical fitness or transformation? Or who do you know that is actively working on their physical fitness? Who do you know that could use financial freedom? or is in debt, like major debt. They talk about like their school loans and all that shit. Freedom of time, people that are like, I wish I could be home with my kids, my job, I'm working two jobs, it's killing me. Um, and I'm not mimic mocking people, I'm being like honest, that's just like, that's what I see when I read those types of posts. Um, flexibility of location. I want you to think like military families, families that have to move a lot because of the husband's job or the, um, someone that loves to travel, but they can't as much as they like, they need that location flexibility. Um, financial freedom, like I said, it's like those people living paycheck to paycheck, those 
people that haven't received a raise probably in a long time, you know, like your friends are trying to do that performance based work. Um, I had to do that with nursing and it was such bullshit because I was doing like above and beyond my job every day, but then I had to be doing like pushing paperwork to get my raise just because I had to get outstandings on every like aspect of the mark. And it was just so ridiculous. Um, people that have, like I said, people with tons of debt, people that paid for expensive degrees and can't find a job or people that just graduate with degrees and can't find jobs in general. Um, the time I'd say people would like to want more time with their kids or their family. They're overworked and underpaid. A lot of nurses, a lot of teachers come into play here. Um, I feel like service jobs in general, that's where you're going to find that. Um, want to spend more time with their friends or travel more physical fitness. Like I said, it's like, you know, they just need that healthy lifestyle change or to take their fitness to the next level, um, whether it be maybe they're already in shape and they just like could take that to the next level of helping other people, whatever it may be. The freedom to build a business around their passions, whether they love marketing, whether they love being creative or they, if they love social media, that they are a great person potential ideal coach um love helping people they uh, like i said the people like with the jobs of servants heart like nurses docs teachers military uh physical therapists who else firefighters ems type of people i feel like they really just like have i'm not saying that other people don't but like really these people just like naturally come to the coaching um community and really just fit in or people that just need that community and fellowship. They need that. They need that. They just love it. They need somebody to lift them up. Not everybody has a support system and we have to remember that. And you have to remember that like our team, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting over the plague. Um, it's fellowship. We have family and this, that's what we are. So these are the people you have to remember. Who do you know? And I'm not talking just in your social media newsfeed. I'm talking about the people who do you know? Um, who are the people you want to build your legacy with? These are the people that you need to be reaching out to right away. Like when we, like within this week, actually tomorrow. Okay. Um, Another, uh, other good people to reach out to are people that already have influence. So people that are, that give great advice, people that you know that have a social media following, whether they be bloggers, whether they be like IG superstars, whether they be, they have a like page with a great following. Um, it could be something with faith. It could be something with um, completely unrelated to health and fitness. Just somebody that has a great following and people, it's that, the go-to person or respected by their peers they're big in your community but i wouldn't rely on that if you're big in the community that can only go so far they have to have some sort of reach beyond that lots of interaction reactions on their social media posts or they're already an entrepreneur they have contact with lots of people and they have a big reach a hairstylist your personal trainer um a real estate agent you know those people have tons of reach and they know tons of people. These are people that you need to be reaching out to and already talking to about or sharing, not just the coaching opportunity or at least inviting to your challenge groups to get them started. Now I'm going to share with you my um, seven step funnel because I feel like there's just been a ton of you guys that are just like, I know what, like, you guys are like, oh, I'm doing my invites. I'm doing my, like, but I feel like it's becoming dead end. And Ashley and I were talking about this and it's like, it's like a dead end. You guys are just like commenting and then you're like messaging. And then it's like, well, I get crickets. So I stop. So I want you guys to take note of this seven step funnel. And it's very effective if you use it and you implement it appropriately and you have a system and you have a notebook or a binder is what I recommend. And you are consistently doing this. You can do it in a Google doc. You can do it, whatever. <laughs> Step one. Um, actually, hold on. Rewind. Um, you need to control the controllable. And a seven step funnel is one thing you can control. You can focus on a few people. I hear so many coaches say, Well, I have a couple people that I've been talking to that said they're going to buy challenge packs. I don't give a shit. If they didn't buy the challenge pack, they did not buy the challenge pack. They did not commit to the group. They did not commit to their health and fitness journey. Until they, until you see that order in their online office, that's nothing. Like, 
I hate, like, this is tough love, Megan, talking. I don't know if it's just, like, me coming off my plague or what it is. But it's just, that's, like, the bottom line. I'm being so honest with you right now. It's just, but I'm being so true with you. It's just, that's how it is. Until you see that, like, order come through in your online office, that's when you're like, okay, yes, my, this person's in it. They have their skin in the game. They're ready to go. They're in it. They're going to go. And then sometimes that person isn't even all the way in it, but it's okay. At least they've taken those first steps. Okay. But point being is you cannot over-focus on those few people. You can't control whether or not they're ready. You can't control though how many new people you talk to daily and how many people you connect with, invite, follow up with, and track your progress. Um, and if you track, you must, I recommend keeping notes because I can't like keep people straight. Like I'm like, oh wait, how many kids they have? I forget how many like babies they've like popped out since we went to school together. Like I keep notes of people too. Um, that's important. I keep that in my progress tracking as well. So, you know, just keep in mind, you have to be intentional. Step one, this is what you do. Like and comment on a few of their posts. Um, I personally recommend commenting with intentional commenting, like it's not a comment you want to receive. In two days, go to step number two. Step number two, like or comment, um, message to connect. Step three, check your message history, follow up, form, ask about them. Hey, what's going on? How are you? You know, how have things been? I haven't talked to you in forever. Step four, follow up in messages. Continue to form them. Step five, invite to the challenge group or coaching app. Step six, did they respond? Remind them of a deadline, whether that is, hey, my coaching opportunity group starts this, or my new coach uh, group starts this date, or my challenge, last date to order from that challenge group is this date. If they didn't respond, you put them back in the rotation to start at number one in 90 days, and then you'll go back to step one with that person. It's really that simple, guys. It's just that simple of a seven step funnel. Um, when I'm inviting people to the coaching opportunity, I keep it so simple. And I do my formula is give them a compliment and let them know that they would be great at doing what I do. That's it. Give them a compliment, plus let them know they would be great at doing what I do. That's it. That's my invite. So I want to know how do you share the business op? There's a couple of different options. One-on-one -on -one conversations. Can you first of all, can you have one? I feel like I get so many messages from coaches saying, "Hey, could, when's your next? When your, when's your next sneak peek? When's your next bit? Like, when's your next?" Uh, the sneak peeks are always like the thing that people want to put them in because that's the way you don't have to interact with them or like follow up with them right away or like you can hide behind your computer screen. Like even with the webinar, you have to show up and be there person to person. Guys, if you can't, if you have someone contact you about the coaching opportunity, you go right then and you talk about it. You don't say, hold on, let me check with my coach and see if there's like when the next sneak peek is. And unless you know there's a sneak peek starting the next day or two, that's not even an option. You have to talk about it. You have to be able to talk about it. And you don't have to know all the answers, but one thing you have to know, whether you're a new coach signed on yesterday or whether you're a new co a coach signed on a couple months ago or a coach that signed on two years ago, you know more than they know. And the worst thing that can happen is, hey, let me get your questions and I'll talk to my coach and then I will. Or maybe you can set up a three-way conversation between your coach and them and you guys can have a three-way on um, Zoom chat or something, whatever. But my question is, can you... I want you to ask yourself, can you have a chat with somebody about the business opportunity and get them to sign up as a coach? That is like a real gut check because if I get one more, I love, I love my coaches, but if I get one more, when's the next sneak peek? Are you kidding me? You guys have been coaching for like a year. No, you should be able to talk about this to a point. Cause let me tell you guys before coaching before there was sneak peeks we didn't even have it like we used to and i'm gonna get into that next which we didn't even have sneak peeks we hardly had webinars we used to just pitch it 
right on our page. And then you would have one, that, it was all one-on-one -on -one combo. That's how we had it. I don't even know. Ashley, did you even go to a sneak peek? I don't even think you did. I'm pretty sure you did it. No, I did. I went to one. Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like that must have been when they were like first coming out. But so it's just crazy though, because you should be able to say, I'll tell you that starting to coach, it's like a passionate heat of the moment decision. So you have to be able to talk about it because if you give them, oh, wait till next week when that, when Ashley's uh, sneak peek starts, guess what? You lost your coach. You lost your potential coach. And if you didn't lose them and they joined the sneak peek, it, it, I can get, I can almost, I'll give you, if you can get them, if they sign up with you, I'd say that was like luck. That wasn't like you did, you did the, you did the like work and got it. So sprinkle coaching on your page daily is part of your life. <clears throat> I was just going to get into that in your challenge groups, sneak peek groups, live happy hour events, webinars, and then you have live Q and A's that you can do via zoom or you can do them live via Facebook live or whatever. So I'm going to talk about those posts I was just talking about, which are the coach recruitment posts. These can be done, and these are what I was talking about. We used to publicly invite to coaching on our team or to your next coach mentorship group. I honestly can't remember the last time I saw somebody in our team probably do one of these. I mean, I'm not even guilty, but I, have, I don't even remember the last time I did one of these. But one thing I'll say, the musts you must have with these posts are a, your story, B, what coaching has done for your life, and C, your call to action. So um, with this slide, you could have your opening. It can be talking about whether a physical, mental, or financial transformation. You can start with a question or a quote about your state, you know, about you and what you've done with the business. Your body, you need to talk about your story. Um, where were you when you started? When did things change for you? What happened since coaching came into your life and what is life like now? That is what your body is. And this, guys, this goes for people with Facebook, um, like, pages as well. This needs to go, with, this is like if you were doing an ad. And it's not salesy, it's personal. It's just like when you look at Apple, Apple relates to people because they talk about things like family and then they talk about their product. They don't just spew out, we did this. For, so you can take photos of your family, like Microsoft does. They talk about family, and we created this so you could take pictures of your family. They, they hit home with the heart first, because they talk about, they get personal. Closing, what type of coach are you looking for? You have to be specific or you're not gonna get what you want. You have to li li list the qualities or the traits you're looking for. Um, you can bust stereotypes if you want to. I don't really go into that because I feel like it's too much mumbo jumbo. You have to be sh if you put too much verbiage or too much words, too many words, people will stop looking, they'll stop reading. Um, and Ashley will get into the projections anyways. And what are the things you love about your team? Why should I join your team? Why out of all these teams should I want to join your team? Well, they should want to join your team because you're part of an elite team. And there's only 210 elite teams in this entire coaching network. Call to action. What will you ask them to do next? They can fill out an application. Oops, sorry for that typo. Comment below, send you a message. Whatever, there, there's a lot of things they can do. Collecting emails is key. I highly recommend you do that just because you never know where social media is gonna go or what's gonna happen. If you can get emails, that's, I definitely think you should make that a priority. And don't forget guys, anytime, you talk about anything with financial regards, leaving jobs. Um, if they really are getting, they're getting tight on this stuff, but vacations, trips, um, anything it's, they're getting really, uh, pounded down on this. This is why we aren't branded as a typical MLM. And it's because we use this phrase. We're supposed to use it on pictures. We're supposed to use it at the bottom of our posts. Um, putting it in the comments does not count, guys. You need to put it at the bottom of your posts. Um, at least do that if you're not going to put it on your pictures. I don't put it on my pictures. I know I should. But bottom line is put it at the bottom of your posts. Putting it in the comments doesn't count. If you're leaving a job, put it on there somewhere. Find a way to put it on there. Um, I don't even, it, that's just the bottom line. Um, because when you get caught up by compliance, I don't want to be having to I'm not going to cover for you if I know I've told you that many times. 
Now, example of a coach recruitment post. This is an example of what I, what I did. Now look how long ago it was. Um, it just happened to come up because I found it in my, here I go, I told my story. Then do you know, I asked questions. Do you know someone that works from home or wants to spend more time with their family or financial freedom to quit their demanding job they don't even enjoy? If, not, if so, coaching can seriously blah, 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 blah. Look, there's my call to action example right there. Another example. Uh, this one was like one of my first coaching posts ever. I originally joined Beachbody as a customer, blah, 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 um, which really I was a customer, but I had a complete intention of coaching. Um, not perfect, overcomer, told my story, positive life changes, what it did for me, helping others. If you think this is something you would be interested in, what have you got to lose? just follow the link to apply. Very personal, have my child in it, okay? I don't recommend, <laughs> don't take that as an exact post, but you know, so what do you share about this business with others? Your journey and how a challenge group is helping you? Is it holding you, making you more accountable, community support, creating great results consistently and confidently, bold and vulnerable is what you need to share. Um, how are your challenge groups helping other people? Are you sharing successes of challengers and successes of your teammates? People need to understand that these groups are helping people other than you. And that's where we're going to be bringing in the tribe business binder um, that Ashley and I have been talking about. So you guys will be hearing about that in the next day or so. We want you to be sharing your transformations in one section. We're going to be sharing all of our, but we're going to share, I think Ashley and I decided by program, I believe, is what we're going to share all of our um, transformations that we get permission from our people. Also. Don't underestimate um, per program, sorry. And we're gonna start sh having a business binder that we can share just like Carl walks around with his binder of transformations. We wanna have a binder of transformations from our entire tribe, showing the number of lives we're changing. And how is coaching helping you? Don't underestimate those small successes, guys. I had this one from earlier this year, paying for Daniela's dance tuition in full. And um, you know, that was, not to me that's not a big deal but you know that's the thing it's little things that and to me that's like nothing but sharing that that was a big deal to a lot of people um and also if you don't feel like you've had success in this business don't wait to share and i can say you have to share where you're going you have to, if you love your job that's awesome don't wait you know, share that love, but also share that you love the perks of coaching, your family vacations, your extra income. And remember, not everyone wants to quit their job, and that's A-OK. -okay. You know, be cool with sharing the hustle and the hard work. Don't act like this is some, like, freaking, like, nothing drives me more crazy than being on um, <laughs> Instagram, and they're like, I only do this, like, 30 minutes a day and make six figures. I'm like, bullshit, that's not the truth. So, you know, yeah, you can... Like there's a such thing as a power hour, but there's different levels of a power hour. Your dreams are worth the work and you can share that with people. Share successes of coaches on your team. If you don't have people on your team, share successes of your teammates. Shout them out, share a little about their lives and how they're making coaching work for them. Remember, success breeds success. And share the lifestyle, you know, give people a glimpse into your life as a coach. What does that look like? Think of like a Snapchat behind the scenes, but like on your Facebook or on your like page, okay? Um, this is an example of how I used to share successes of my coach. This is Lindsay. Every, you know, my friend at Beachbody coach, who is the 2013 top coach in the entire network. Oh, look at this 150,000 coaches. That's crazy to think about that. Look how much we've grown. Lindsay Matway. And I would invite people to her coaching on because I would just say, hey guys, like my coach is a top coach. I'm part of an elite team. This, you should share the successes of others. If you don't feel, there's no shame in doing that. Like, that's one thing I just never, um, I always would share. My coach is a top five coach in the company. Why wouldn't you wanna be part of me? I have access to the top information, like, or the best training out there. And that drew coaches into my business. I don't know why I don't see that more often from people on our team, to be honest with you. But it's just like, a, I'm not saying to, you don't know, have to tag people. That's just an example though, right there. I had so many people inquiring, you know, and things like that. And that's why, because wouldn't you want to be part of the 
group that's breeding success because clearly Lindsay may, knows how to breed success. So that's something I just wanted to share. Um, oh, sorry, I'm clearly like killing time. All right, recruiting monthly plan. You have to get organized and start your month proactive. Don't be reactive. You guys just make sure you use your monthly team and share it with your, or use a monthly strategy and share it with your team. Have set times to recruit. Example, have the last two weeks of the month. You have to have particular times. Now, if anybody comes to you at any time of the month, you always want to be recruiting. Um, that's why we have our online center set up so that people can always get started. You, you should have at least two scheduled business opportunity events per month that you're inviting to and one that's at near the end of the month because the new coach training starts at the beginning of every month. Plug in your team and have them follow what you do. And this is the thing. You don't have to have some like beautiful freaking graphic, AKA here. You don't have to have that guys. That is like hoopla. Like that is not necessary. That's wasted time. AKA that's what Danielle, N N Danielle knew Tony is like, people need to get off a of freaking pick monkey and get inviting. And I agree. Simple or detailed, just do it. This can be the, what you give to your team. Week one's a free group. Week two's a challenge group. Week three's a sneak peek. Wrapping up S to 10 and biz off call. Call schedule. This is what you have. Zoom and put in your Zoom link. That can be what you give that your recruiting monthly plan. It can be that simple or it can be that detailed. Um, that's an example of my friend Becca Robinson's. That's an example of Lindsay's. Two great examples, but very different, but producing this pretty much the same results. Okay. This actually, this came from Mika or Micah Folsom or Tara Bialik. I can't remember who was very basic about hers. Last, is, last but not least, I want to talk about, you want business builders. This is the number one question I get from people on our team, people outside of our team. People always come up to me and they're like, I want business building coaches. How do you do it? How do you get these business building coaches? You have to lead by example and you have to create advocates. Your team will do what you do, okay? You have to be the coach you want to attract. Do the things lead by example, and your team will do what you do. And you have to continuously be growing through personal development. If you're not doing personal development, you will not become a business builder and you will not effectively grow, bring, bring the business builders in. The vital process, and Ashley will kind of tap into that, is getting clients started, get them results, transition to coach, develop and mentor coaches. Um, you need to start new coaches and new customers in a challenge group and have them focus solely on their challenge and their own results. And you need to get, dedicate yourself to helping them get results so they get excited, they gain belief in the products and the process, and they feel compelled to share it with all, to share, share it all with other people. They can't even contain it because they're so excited because this is so amazing. They got these amazing results and they've had their first wins as a coach and they've gotten their first commissions and they've covered their product. And this is just so fucking amazing. Like I have to share it with other people. You have got to help your coaches get there. When you do that, that's when you're going to get those business builders. That's when you're going to develop those advocates in your business. Focus. Now you have to remember that not everybody can focus this way. Not everybody can focus and do, okay, I can do my journey and I can do my business. They just can't. There's just some people, and you have to keep that in mind and you have to be sensitive to it. There's people that start this business for the business and they're not able to focus on both themselves and learning the business and you gotta be sensitive to it. So when a coach is ready to work, that's when you say, okay, that's cool. You weren't ready the first three months. You were working on yourself. That's fine. That's why they are encouraging the vital process, getting clients started, then bringing them into coaching. But my point being is Ashley and I are perfect examples. Like, I mean, Ashley, I think was, we were both like probably challengers for what, two months, a couple months. And then we both became active business building coaches. But I think we kind of both came into this with like, man, I could probably be a coach. But so I don't want to discourage you from bringing people in right away as coaches, because I think I'm a firm believer in like, when I came into the business, I was like, Oh, like, why not me? That's how I came into the business. So when a coach is ready to work, I want you to remember, don't force them into coaching too soon, especially if you have discount coaches. Don't in your mind, they're a discount coach and you are helping them on their journey. Don't think like, Oh, this person's a potential coach. No, they're a discount coach. They're a challenger. That's what they are. And 
when a coach is excited about and ready to work, you're going to hold their hand through the first steps, through inviting, through conversations, objections, sharing on social media. Keep it simple. Do not handhold people who say they want this but are not meeting you halfway. That's my number one, like that's big key advice I have for you. Um, and also let, what I have to let you know is they must leave the nest to spread their wings to fly. If they are two or three months in and they are still clinging on to you and still putting people in your groups and putting people in your groups that are like, bought a challenge pack three months ago and haven't been on Shakeology since, and they are giving you a bunch of excuses, giving you the runaround, it's, they need to be kicked out of the nest because they're not working the business. And I'm not saying that you have to be a business builder, but even if you're here working this business part-time, you need to take ownership and own your own business, whether that be part-time, as a challenge coach, as a part-time coach, whatever coach you're gonna be, you partner up with somebody else and you go, you, you get out of the nest. You don't cling onto a coach and expect them to run their business for you because that's just going to drain the shit out of you. So I hope that helps. And also I have some um, scripts of what I send to people to invite them personally to the coaching opportunity. So I hope that, that helped you guys in some way, shape or form. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I should have known I would start talking. I ended up adding like two topics after Ashley and I talked, but I was like, those are like, I felt like I couldn't not add those. So I hope it helps somebody. All right. Hey everyone. So I'm going to take over and make this super short and sweet. And I just want to give a shout out to all my brand new coaches who are here tonight. Welcome. So, um, I want to talk about finding your ideal coach and a little backstory for you, for those who may not know this, but I am, I just celebrated my two year anniversary as a coach and quit my full-time job. And it was just so exhilarating to, you know, be able to quit my job. And that was a goal. But when I first started coaching, that wasn't my goal. And I'll give you a little backstory, you know, as we go. But when I first started as a coach, I really was doing it to make extra money. Oh, I had a ton of student loan debt. I still do. And um, I was like, okay, well, I see these other coaches posting about how they're getting out of debt, you know, and I like this. Maybe I can do it on the side because I really love my job. And so I started this just as a hobby, but literally after two weeks of the new coach Academy and really immersing myself in the personal development, I started with the Craig holiday series. And I recommend that to everyone. He did um, a series. I think it was like seven or eight phone calls for beach body. And you can access that through me or Megan, let us know. But that's what I listened to on the way to and from work each day and was like, Oh my gosh, the job that I thought I loved is actually communist China. Like this coaching opportunity is amazing. And I could have so much more. And so at that moment, two weeks in, I was like, I'm going all in, I'm going to make this a full-time job. But I had so many things going on over the past two years, full-time student, full-time job, got pregnant, moved, et cetera. So I couldn't devote a whole ton of time to coaching. Um, and I thought I was all in, but I quit my job on December 23rd. And you know, this is now I'm getting going on a tangent like Megan does. But for those of you who are kind of like struggling and trying to find that balance of like, when do I quit my job? When can I make that transition and, and really make this a full-time job? I stayed at my job for way too long because I was worried. I was like, if I quit my job, like, am I going to make enough money through coaching? Are we going to be able to survive? Because I can't afford to just be a stay-at-home mom. We have a ton of debt. Um, but when I quit my job on December 23rd, I had eight success club points. And that day I was like, all right, it's time to make this shiz happen. Like I got to get to work. And from December 23rd to December 31st in one week, I got 60 success club points. I just hustled like a mofo. And now today I have over 40 success club points and it's only the beginning of the month. And I just have all of this, this traction going. I stayed at my job for far too long for security. And I wish I had left sooner because it lit a fire under me. So when you guys get to that point where you're like, okay, can I do it? Just do it. Quit your job because then you will make this the only option and you will just, you will make it happen. Okay. Now back to finding your ideal coach. 
I am all about finding business builders and I want women just freaking like me who are go-getters. I like women who are strong leaders and will do whatever it takes to get there. Um, so here are my tips for you. Find your voice and use your own language. Be an original, don't be a copy. We can give scripts and it's, it's great to use scripts at the beginning, but you really need to be comfortable with explaining things in your own words. As you progress through coaching, you need to stop relying on scripts and don't ever copy another coach's post, public post, because it just screams plagiarism because you could tell that it's not that person's authentic self. They're using someone else's word. So be an original, don't be a copy and refer to your challenge, your challengers as clients Right? People don't understand what challengers mean. So I never refer to my challengers as challengers. I always refer to them as clients and I refer to my coaches as my team. So when you start to change your language, you start to talk how you normally talk, right? You're not trying to be a beach body robot. You're not trying to talk like I talk or Megan talks or Lindsay Matway talks. You're going to find success because that's when your authentic self is going to shine through and you are going to find people who are like you. You want to speak to the person you were before coaching, and we're going to talk about this in a moment, but not right now. So remember how you were before you found this opportunity. What, what were you struggling with? What was missing in your life? What kind of emotions and feelings did you have? And then create your avatar. So here's my avatar and her name is Taylor and this is a great activity for you to do whether you're a brand new coach or not so I knew about this two years ago but I didn't do it until like this this summer truly I spent like a year and a half trying to talk to everyone right I was like I will take anyone and everyone who wants to join my team I just need warm bodies but I realized that I was attracting people I didn't want to work with, right? They were asking, you know, they were too needy. They weren't go-getters. They weren't self-starters. I had a few, like I have a few coaches, um, you know, my leaders were just go-getters off the start, but I was getting people who I didn't really want to work with and they didn't stay in the business. Like they gave it a month or two and then they were like, this is not for me. And I was like, okay, I need to find people like me who are in it for the long haul, who are willing to just do whatever it takes to get to their goals. So I developed this avatar and I started to every post that I make, I envision this girl, Taylor. Taylor is my middle name. And these are really all of the things that I'm looking for in my potential coaches. I want people who are educated, who are married, who are moms or soon to be moms, who come from a working class family. I want, the, I want to inspire that rags to riches story. And I want to bring a team with me to do that. Um, I want women who are emotional eaters. I don't really attract full-blown fitness freaks. Like I don't have like bodybuilders on my team because I'm always talking about how I don't like exercise. I do it because it's like mandatory, like taxes. You got to pay your taxes, you got to exercise, right? So I'm attracting those type of people. I want people who are leaders, who will take something and run with it, who are strong-willed, who are outgoing when they need to be, but they really just want to be at home and be introverts. People who are in debt because they've they did everything like they were supposed to do. They went to school and they took out student loans and they got this job and they realized, is this it? Am I going to work every day just to pay off the debt that I accrued to get this job and not be able to be at home with my kids? Those are the people that I want on my team. So this is who I speak to every day. And in fact, this is really funny. I told Megan this yesterday or today. But last week, I signed up a coach with my same exact name. So Taylor's my middle name. Ashley's my first name. I signed up a coach named Ashley Taylor. And what's even creepier is we have the same exact birthday, same exact birthday. So this speaks volumes, right? When you speak to who you want to attract, you're going to attract them. And then the next day, I signed another girl named Taylor who is like the, the perfect coach for me. So create your avatar. Who, what's the profile? What's her history? What, what are the personality traits? What does she want out of life? What are they spending money on? Because if they're spending money on certain things, then you know that they're going to spend money on coaching, right? So I like, I'm very specific here, like Apple products and, you know, organic items, etc. So not everyone on my team fits this profile, but lately almost all of my new coaches do. You get what you post for. So do you want hard work in coaches, but are you actually showing that you are hard working? And I'm gonna give you some examples of this. Do you want coaches, 
And are you even telling people that you want coaches? I talk to coaches all the time who are like, I can't get anybody interested in the coaching opportunity. And I look at their page and they never post anything about coaching. You would never freaking know they're a coach or that they're expanding their team and they're looking for other people to do this too. Do you want coaches who don't make excuses, but are you showing how you overcome your excuses? And so before I show you examples, because my examples really tie all of this together, address objections publicly. So you can anticipate objections you're going to get, or you can actually take objections you get from people and then intertwine them in your post. So people are always worried about fear, right? Fear of failure, um, fear of what others will think. They don't have the time. They don't have the network. They don't have the degrees. They don't have the certifications, etc. So here are some examples. Um, and my examples are all recent examples because I did not have time to go back to two, year, you know, two years ago and find posts for you because time management, I need to be spending the majority of my time on growing my business. And going back two years and finding posts, that wasn't the best use of my time because I spent three hours in the car today driving. Anyway, on a tangent. So this is something I posted on Saturday. I went to Melanie Mitro's purpose event, which again, if you aren't going to live events, you are not going to be successful. You have to be going to live events. Um, so before, you know, that, that started at 8.30 a.m. and I told my husband, I'm piecing out here at 6 a.m. so I could go get some work done. So here I'm telling people that you don't, this coaching gig isn't hard. It just requires hella heart, hustle, and Wi-Fi. So I'm telling people, you don't need special degrees or certifications or special skills. You just have to be willing to put in the, the time. And it's a Wi-Fi business. So you could go to a coffee shop and you could do your business there. You don't have to be tied to um, an actual office building. This one was last week and it was right when I um, was able to quit my job and I love to use the hashtag coach life. Sometimes I use coach life is the best life, that hashtag. Um, so here I say early, every early morning, every late night, every free second I spent working on my business was worth it. Right. And then I say, here's what I do. I get to chat with other women, teach them how to make healthy choices and post about it on social media. And then I really ap appeal to that emotion. Like I get to be the one to be at home with my daughter, to be the one she wakes up and sees, to put her down, to feed her, to hold her. And that was worth it. And then I make that call to action. Want to join me? Have what it takes? message me. And then here's where I say, like, I'm only looking for go-getters. I only work with women who get shit done and crush goals. So I am, I have lately, um, in the past few months been posting these kinds of invites multiple times per week, almost every single day. I am saying like, I'm growing my team. I'm a coach, but you have to be a go-getter because I'm looking for a specific type of woman, woman. Um, so this kind of deals with, um, this is more of a workout post, but I wanted to show you how I address so many different things in one post. So this was from yesterday. And um, I get a lot of excuses from people. Like literally, I had somebody say, I can't do an at-home workout program because I have an old house and my floors creak a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was at my grandmother's house visiting and staying with her and her house is really old and creaky. And so I was like, this is the perfect opportunity to address that objection. Um, I don't have a DVD player. Somebody today emailed me and said, well, my DVD player is broken. Well, I have a solution for that. Somebody the other day told me that their Wi-Fi was spotty. Well, you can download, you can save your um, workouts from the Beachbody On Demand app. So you don't need to stream it from Wi-Fi. You can stream it just from the app. So here I'm saying, you know, I was up until 2 a.m. responding to emails. So I'm telling people this job isn't easy. It requires some work. But look at the freedom and the flexibility that I have. Um, I refer to it as the Netflix of workouts app. So that's just a little tip that I've been doing. And I'm getting so many messages asking me, what is this Netflix of, of workouts app? And then I'm like, oh, well, what, what are your goals? Let me give you some info. Um, so here I'm, I'm talking about excuses. I'm showing that I get over my excuses. And I can't tell you how many messages I, I get every day that say, like, I've been following you for months and you've been inspiring me and now I'm ready. So it's about consistency. You're not going to make one post and sell a bunch of challenge packs. But if you show up every day and you show that you are overcoming your obstacles and you are just getting it done, people are going to watch you and then it's going to take off. Remember, what you do today is going to pay off in 60 to 90 days. The fruits of my labor from the fall are really paying off right now. And um, what I'm doing today is going to pay off in the spring. So 
address multiple um, excuses and issues in one. So authentically sharing, post about coaching at least five times a week. You have to be doing this. And it doesn't have to be long posts like mine are. And at first, I never posted those long posts because I was like, people don't read them. But lately, I've been just really writing from the heart. I'm like, I'm just going to sit here and write. When I feel inspired in my phone, in the notes app, I have hundreds of notes. Like whenever I feel something, I will just start writing. And then when I need to post something, I'll go back and then I'll have it and it'll be ready to post. So I've been writing much longer posts lately and I, and people read them because when they message me, they will point out, they will pull out like the smallest detail from something I posted in this long ass post. So I know that people are reading them. So post about coaching, it can be short, it can be long, just speak from the heart. And use the word coach as often as possible. The girl, if you went to Super Saturday, Jen Guthrie, she was one of the girls who spoke in the video, but she also did a special recording for Melanie Mitro's event the following day that we got to go to. And this was one of her tips before posting ask yourself, how can I add the word coach to this post? Because if people don't know you're a coach, they're not going to know to reach out to you for fitness things. And they're not going to know that they can join you as a coach. That this is actual business opportunity and they can make a business from home. So always use the word coach. So what could you be sharing? Megan touched on this, the physical benefits. It keeps you accountable. Um, I talk about this all the time. I share my transformation every single Tuesday without fail. And every Tuesday I pretty much say, I wouldn't have been able to do this without the support of my online group. So people know that like I'm accountable to something. Talk about how you're making money. You get paid to work out, right? My most successful coaching ad is when I sat down and I was like, okay, what is it that I do? And I wrote like, I'm looking for women who want to get paid to work out and wear yoga pants and drink chocolate superfood shakes. Um, the emotional aspects, right? The friendships, the community that you have. How is your self-confidence growing? Do you feel like you have a purpose? You actually have found influence and impact. What recognition? So I talk about this a lot as a teacher. So I was a former teacher. And I say how teachers are never recognized. You know, we never get that recognition. You do, you pour your heart into your lesson. And those kids don't come up to you every day and say, oh my gosh, this is the best lesson ever. Thank you so much. You changed my life. But in coaching, you will wake up to messages all the time from people who said, you changed my life. They did all the work. You know, you just are like guiding a challenge group. But you get that feeling of fulfillment. So the success club prizes, if you qualify, for a success club prize, you sure as heck better be posting about it and sharing that you get those free incentives just for doing your job. And then the financial incentives, don't wait until like you can quit your job to show your success. If you earned enough money to pay for a date night with your husband, then post that, right? Because people would die for that. To be able to pay a babysitter and go on a date night with extra income, a lot of people can't afford that. So if you only make hundred dollars this month, then share that. If you only make $38 and that covers, I don't know, your electric bill, then share that. If it covers one week's worth of groceries, share that. You do not have to wait until you can quit your job or you've made, you know, I'm going to show you my post until you made thousands of dollars. So this was my post I made just about an hour ago. And here I took, there's a lot of pieces in here. So I won the success club webinar with um, the Eat, Pray, Love author. Went to it the other day, took so many great tidbits from it, posted about it, shared that I had won that webinar, but her whole thing was kind of good to great. Give up the good things in your life so that you can have the great things without sacrifice. So this whole post was about how I gave up those good things, eating lunch with my friends at work, watching TV, saying no to social events so that I could have the freedom and flexibility that I have now. I would be able to quit my job. And my paycheck today was the highest it's ever been. And I'm not even going to give you the income disclaimer. It's at the bottom of this post. But um, it, it was just so shy, so shy of my entire month's month, an entire month of what I earned in teaching, I earned in one week. And I pretty much earned the same exact thing last week. So right now I'm almost at like double my teaching salary. So that's why I said, like, if you're teetering, like, should you quit your job? Like, go for it because it will light a fire under you to like get shit done and make it happen. Um, but here I also am speaking to my avatar, right? I'm talking about how I don't come from a family of entrepreneurs. I come from a family who always told me that it takes money to make money, that I could never be a business owner, that I had to play it safe and just go into a career that gave me a salary. So I'm talking to the ideal woman that I want. And I also recruit a lot of teachers, a lot of women in education. So I talk about being a teacher 
And I say, I don't invest, I didn't invest a ton of money to start my coaching business, right? Because all everyone wants to know, like, do you have to invest $5,000 or a ton of money to start your business? No. So I address that objection. So I'm talking to my avatar, I'm addressing objections, I'm addressing those fears and concerns all in one post and getting some personal development. Here's something I posted on Monday. Um, and this was like, and truly, this was hard for me to write because I posted this right after I learned that one of my friends passed away. She was my age, not to bring it on, uh, end on a down note, but she was my, my friend, my age, a mom of twins, and she passed away suddenly on Friday, and I found out Monday morning. Um, and so this was hard for me to write, but I was like, I need to get over my emotion, right? A lot of people just act on emotion, and they're like, you know what? This, I, this terrible thing happened. I'm not going to post but you know what? Life is bigger than that. And I had to, to, to just keep going with my mission and with what I wanted to do and how I wanted to help other people. So I just said, you know, um, I don't have the Monday blues. I am able to, to visit my family this week. I am creating my own schedule. And then I address those fears, right? I chose to get over my fear of failure. I chose to ignore what others thought and said about me. And I say that people did make fun of me, but now who's laughing? Me, because they're at work. And this is absolutely true. My best friend made fun of me behind my back to my husband because he wasn't on board either. Both of them were in cahoots and I caught them one day texting each other and making fun of me, right? But now I'm basically out earning him and she's stuck at a job she hates. So I'm like, ha ha ha, like you're, you know, I'm, I'm happy that they made fun of me because it fueled me because I was like, you know what, bitches, I'm going to show you, I'm going to make this work. And I did. So you have to get over that fear, if you're a failure, fear of what people are going to think and say about you. So I put it out there and I said, people made fun of me, but I let it fuel me. I made the decision to work my business in the pockets of my time instead of laying around, watching TV, mindlessly scrolling Facebook. And now I can do as I wish. And I get to watch my grandmother play with my, my daughter um, on a Monday afternoon when I should be at work, but I create my own schedule. Okay, and last but not least, recruiting from challenge groups is super, super um, short, but plant the seed. So Megan said, you don't invite everyone from the challenge group, but personally, and this is no offense to Megan, but I was a challenger. I, be, I joined her group in, I think, late June, and um, I, I was pretty active in the group, but not really active. I was not a star in the group by any means. And I saw her go to summit and her coach was the top coach and Megan was surrounded by all of these other really successful coaches. And so for the next six months, I stalked her and all of those other coaches. And every day I type in their names. I didn't follow them. I type in their names to see what they were doing and what they were up to. Cause I was so intrigued by these people who were nurses and teachers and they became full-time coaches and they were at home and they were paying off debt. And I kept telling myself, no, that that wasn't meant for me. I had a job, a career that I loved. I wasn't meant to do this silly job with Beachbody on the computer. That wasn't for me. And so six months, I kept talking myself out of it. And I kept thinking to myself, well, Megan hasn't brought it up to me. So maybe she doesn't think I'd be a good coach because all those coaches were like blonde and beautiful and perfect. And I'm like, so she probably doesn't think that I, I would be a good coach. But finally, I saw Brittany Leggett post that she paid off like over $100,000 in, in student loan debt. And I was like, that's it. Why not? I have all the student loan debt. Why would I not do this? So I reached out to Megan in December and I said, I want to join your sneak peek group. She had posted about it on Facebook. And I was like, I saw that post. I want to join your sneak peek group into coaching. And on day two, day, I'll never forget. Day two was like all about the income. I read all that post about income. It was a five day group on day two. I was like, I'm in, how do I sign up? And the rest is history. Remember I said I started as a hobby coach. I just wanted to start to pay off debt and look how it has transformed my entire life. So that is why I believe wholeheartedly in offering the, the um, coaching opportunity to challengers, not to every single challenger, but to those who you think might benefit because chances are they're going to say no but it's gonna plant the seed and they're gonna know that they can do it because for six months, I thought I couldn't do it, that it wasn't for me. And if only I had known sooner, I would be that much farther ahead, right? All my debt would probably be paid off. Um, 
So now I do bring it up. And so this week, the other day, I messaged a lot of my challengers who started with me in mid-February. And um, a few of them said, yes, I want more info. One of them actually said, Ashley, it's so funny that you sent me this because I emailed you earlier today asking for information on the coaching opportunity and I hadn't gotten to my email yet. So on the same exact day, we messaged each other about coaching. So you never know. So that's why I offer to everyone. Most people are going to say no. So I go into it with the expectation that it's going to be a no. But you know what that does is that lets them know that they can do it and it sparks interest. And now they're going to be following me, following me more closely and looking at all the things that I'm posting. And then when they're ready, they're going to come to me. I had a girl reach out yesterday, actually, and she said, are you still accepting applicants like for your team? Because we talked about it a, month, a few months ago, but now I'm ready. So you always want to let people know that you're still open to taking um, other people. And I, I am going to skip the whole challenge tracker thing, but I think the challenge tracker is great for grooming coaches because it gets them into the habit of taking selfies and you can really track and see what they're doing and all that good stuff. Um, but a few things, two other things that I wanted to say that Megan had touched on was one, have a marketing plan. So whenever I'm advertising about the coaching opportunity is the same week that I'm doing all of my recognition for my team. So success starters and success club and leadership ladder and new coaches. So that like when people come to check out my page to see like, Oh, what is this? You know, what is she doing? They, they are also seeing that I'm doing lots of recognition that my team is having success. It's not just me. So that's intentional. And next is I cannot stress the importance of personal development, right? That is what got me into this game. That is what made me realize that there's more to life than just working for a paycheck. Um, and last month in December, I made it a goal to read four personal development books. And I did. And that is why my coaching group was so, so successful. So every month I do this little like sneak peak group, but I do live videos and, um, it has been the most successful group. And I just keep adding all of new, my new prospects into that group. Cause I, it just went so well. And so far this month I have, um, I've hit my goal. I wanted to help 10 women start businesses and I've already hit my goal and it's only the beginning of the month. So personal development and the biggest one I would say is the go giver. So read the go giver, listen to the go giver. It's really short and that will help you, but lead with the coaching opportunity. Um, to people who, you know, don't hold back and think you're being salesy because it has literally transformed my whole life, my family's life. And I want to give this to just everyone who is willing to work for it because it is, it is legit. And I just, I can't say enough good things about it. So I'm going to stop rambling on. Okay. Well, I think this was definitely a useful call. Um, <clears throat> Ashley and I will both post our slides or we'll combine them into one aisle and I will figure it out. Um, so I'm hopeful that that was able to help you guys with some of your recruiting and things like that. If you guys have questions, feel free to post them on the thread um, and I will be posting the recording tonight, okay? All right, guys, have a good one. Oh, and sorry for Ashley's new coaches with all my swear words. I was dropping like a bomb tonight and stuff. <laughs> Chris is Blackburn. That's like your first coaching goal. She's still here. You know, almost what, two, years, two years, a year later. She's still here. She's still golden. So, bye. Bye, guys.